let's review the key concepts for effective strategies for addressing misbehavior. Sometimes misbehavior cannot be prevented and must be directly addressed. Behavior change can happen when parents consistently and effectively manage misbehavior over time. Time out. Time out is the ultimate act of ignoring tactic and perhaps the most effective and immediate consequence that can be used with young children. Time out is a brief break or time away from all of those interesting or wanted results, reactions, or attention that are very important to children. As you heard in previous modules, children want attention, and any attention is better than none. So getting attention from a parent who is upset may seem better than not having a parent pay attention at all. Time out can also provide children an opportunity to calm down. This strategy video is aimed at teaching you the skills to use time out effectively with your young child. The timeout strategy requires careful preparation, essential steps, and consistency. Let's look at how to prepare to use timeout in your family. First, choose a place or a solid chair that is quiet, safe, and away from distractions or other things that might be entertaining or interesting. This will become your family's timeout area. Once you are used to doing timeout at home, you can carry a small mat or towel with you to use as a timeout area in other places where you may need to use timeout. Think about where you could do timeout if you need to in the different places you may be. Determine which behaviors will be addressed by using timeout rather than by other strategies you have learned, such as ignoring or redirection. Some behaviors may result in an automatic or immediate timeout, such as breaking a family rule against aggressive behaviors and others may call for a warning first before going to timeout. You should decide which behaviors are an automatic timeout in your family and make it clear to your child ahead of time. Start by explaining timeout to your child. Remind them of the family rules and the behaviors that will result in timeout. So when we start to do timeouts in our family, this is what it might look like. I'm going to use your baby doll to help us learn, okay? Explain step by step what will happen. Say you've done something like knocked over your sister's tower. You can even show them by role-playing with them, another adult, or a toy animal, so they know exactly what to expect. Do you have any questions? When you have carefully introduced and explained timeout to your child, you can begin to use this strategy to manage problem behaviors. Here are essential steps for an effective timeout. Step one, give a clear warning or direction. If the behavior is one that does not result in an automatic timeout, make sure that you have given a clear warning or direction. Keep your tone and body language neutral. Please play nicely with your brother. If you knock over his tower again, you will go to timeout. If you have given a direction, such as, please pick up the food you threw on the floor, give the child a few seconds to follow through, usually around three to five seconds. You can count to yourself silently inside your head to help keep track of time. Step two, give explanation and direct to timeout. Once it is clear that your child will need to go to timeout, either because they did not follow through as instructed or because the behavior was one that results in an automatic timeout, like hitting or kicking, you will follow through. Direct the child to the timeout area in a calm and neutral tone of voice with a clear explanation for why they are going to time out. Give, Give explanation. explanation. You knocked over your sister's tower again. And direct, and direct to time out. It's time to have a time out. Give, Give explanation. explanation. You did not pick up the food like I told you. And, and direct, direct to time, to time out. out. So now you will go to time out. Or Give, Give explanation. explanation. The rule is to be gentle with each other. Hitting is not gentle. And, and direct, direct to time, to time out. out. So now you will go to time out. Step three, tell a child to sit quietly and start time. Please sit quietly and calmly until I tell you the timeout is over. Tell your child to remain quietly in the timeout area until you say it is time to come out. For young children, timeout should last about two to three minutes and not more than five minutes. Do not set a timer or alarm as this takes the control of timeout away from you. Look at a watch or a clock to keep track of time. Timeout may last longer if your child is not quiet. You will wait to make sure that your child is quiet before ending timeout. So when it gets close to the end of the time, you will listen for your child to be quiet. If your child is not quiet, 
you will continue waiting until you have several seconds of quiet. Stay watchful, but move away, and do not give signs of paying attention. Keep other children in a different area, and keep your distance so that the child is really in timeout. Step four, follow through. When the timeout minutes have passed, and your child is sitting quietly, return to them to let them know timeout is over. Are you ready to play quietly and calmly now? Yes. Yes. If the timeout was earned by not following a direction, it is important to make sure your child follows that direction immediately after leaving timeout and before you move on to any other activities. Otherwise, your child may learn that timeout is sometimes a way to get out of doing what you have told them to do. An example is, you are sitting quietly and your timeout is over. Are you ready to pick up the food off the floor as I told you? If your child refuses or gets up but does not follow the direction you gave, start the timeout again. You could say, because you are not ready to clean the food off the floor like I told you, you will need to stay in timeout. You will start timing again and keep repeating the timeout process until they follow the original direction. Once they have followed the direction, you can acknowledge by using a simple statement such as, thank you for doing what I said. If this was an automatic timeout, let them know that timeout is over and remind them of the rule or reason they earned the automatic timeout. Step five, find opportunity for praise and positive attention. Once all of the steps of timeout are done, the timeout is over. It's important to start looking for the next positive behavior your child does to find opportunities for positive interaction and to provide your child with praise and other positive attention. Remember that the goal of timeout is to address the specific problem behavior. It is important to move on once timeout is over and quickly look for something positive to praise. It can be difficult to go back to positivity when children display frustrating, annoying, or aggressive behaviors. But shifting your attention back to positive behavior is more powerful than getting stuck on negative interactions. Long lectures and explanations provide negative attention, and you are trying to avoid providing attention. The timeout was the consequence. No further consequences are needed. My new puppy is really nice too. Redirect your Bedtime. and your child's attention to a different neutral or positive topic. If the timeout was automatic for breaking a rule or for a completely unacceptable behavior, you may simply remind your child of the rule. If your child needs information about their behavior, you can revisit it later when you have a positive moment and you can calmly talk about what happened and what the child could have done instead. Troubleshooting timeout. Your child will likely test the limits the first few times in timeout. And it is important to think about the different behaviors your child may do in response to being told to take a time out and how you will deal with these behaviors if they happen. Some common behaviors are screaming, hitting, or kicking on the way to timeout, doing something unsafe in the timeout place, and leaving timeout before timeout is over. Let's review a few of the things that you might expect from your child as you start to implement timeout in your family. Sometimes children will say that they will do what you told them after you've started to take them to timeout. It is very important that you follow through with timeout once you've started. Otherwise, your child will learn that they do not have to do what you say immediately and can still avoid timeout. Other times, children will grab a toy or other object while you are implementing timeout. Calmly take the toy away and continue with the next step of timeout. Children may scream, cry, tell you that they don't love you, and give you any number of reasons that they need to get up. Remember that your child is testing and use your active ignoring skills. Your child will eventually get tired of not getting a response and become quiet. Once the timeout period is over and you find your child being quiet for a few seconds, you will return to them and say, you are sitting quietly and your timeout is now over. This helps them learn that they need to be quiet before timeout ends. One of the more challenging things your child can say is that they need to go to the bathroom. Depending on whether you think this is true or testing the limits, you can decide if you want to take the child to the bathroom and then return your child to the timeout area or whether you want to actively ignore. If you decide it is best to take your child to the bathroom, provide only the attention needed to get them there and bring them back to timeout and continue the process.
It is important that they learn they cannot avoid timeout or get attention at this time. Children may hit, kick, fall on the floor, or otherwise physically resist going to timeout. It is very important that you make sure to follow through. You can take your child's hand and lead them to timeout or safely carry them. It is important that you do not use force, drag or pull your child, and that you do not do anything that could result in you or your child getting hurt. If you cannot safely get your child to time out, there are a couple of things you can do. You can quickly remove anything that could be entertaining and distracting, as well as yourself, away from the child, and have them do time out right where they are. In essence, you turn that area into a time out place. Or, you can consider giving a different consequence. You can take away a privilege, such as being able to do one fun activity for the rest of the day, like watching TV or playing outside. Children may also do something that is unsafe, like climbing on or rocking a timeout chair. You cannot ignore dangerous behavior. When this happens, stop the behavior. For example, you could quickly sit your child down again or hold the chair steady. You could remove the chair and have them sit on the floor. It is important not to provide any attention beyond what it takes to make sure your child is safe. Children may get up before you tell them to. If your child gets up or leaves the timeout place, you can return them to the chair and tell them that because they got up, timeout will start over. Then start the timeout period again. If this happens repeatedly and you've already informed them that timeout will start over, there is no need to talk about it again. Simply return your child to the area without talking or providing any additional attention. As with all the other new strategies you are trying, predictability and consistency are essential. Timeout will only be effective if you do it consistently and predictably. That means following the same steps and following through the entire process every time. Your child may test in the beginning, but over time, if you continue to follow through, you will see a decrease in many problem behaviors.